All right, time for another question show. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions from the comments that I plucked out from now and older, so let's get into them. Logical functions, model 93. Would a big pin cushion work for getting debris out? Like we build something designed to get debris lodged in it and then bring it back to earth? Yeah, so that's a great idea, right? That you take something and you put it out into space and you use it to kind of collect or attract or attach pieces of space debris. But having a pin cushion, something that would sort of intercept, you know, would be really tough because it would have to be fairly big or you'd have to kind of know where the debris is going to go. But one of the ideas that's been thought of is that you can run an electrical current through a spacecraft and it will sort of slowly attract nearby uh, pieces of debris. So you could have the thing sort of fly nearby chunks of debris that are known and then slowly attract them to it and kind of attach to it and then move to another location and attract another one. And you could over time gather up quite a lot of debris that way. This is a big problem and we're going to have to need to figure out ways to go and undo our mess in space like we have to clean up our oceans, like we're going to have to clean up our oxygen, get rid of the carbon dioxide, like We've got a big problem, and, and ideas like that are great for trying to clean up the space debris. Victor Wolf Mazo, Planet Nibiru, we safe, yes? We safe, yes. We're still safe. We've been debunking Nibiru since, uh, I think, close to 20 years now. My buddy Phil Plate, bad astronomer, go back, he's got a post about how Nibiru is not going to happen, and I think that post is literally 20 years old. Remember, uh, 2012 and how nothing happened then people keep bringing this thing up it's not real it's not going to happen their evidence is non-existent they're looking at lens flares and cameras they are just like they're literally making things up to freak each other out there's no nibiru there's no planet that's on its way there's no pole flip there's no realignment there's no connection over chakras there's nothing it's all fine you're safe no nibiru deltron theory how about artificial gravity waves? So we can create gravitational waves just by moving masses around in space. The problem is, is that the, the amount of the gravitational wave that we can create is microscopic. When you get two black holes, supermassive black holes colliding together, they create gravitational waves that are barely detectable by the most sensitive instruments here on Earth. So every time we walk around, we are creating gravitational waves. It's just that they're not gonna do anything. So uh, unless we have some new breakthrough in physics, uh, that's gonna be a long way off. Justin Morgan, how big can a supermassive black hole get? Could they go up to a trillion solar masses? There is no limit to how massive a supermassive black hole can get. A supermassive black hole, or any black hole, can consume an infinite amount, can consume all the matter in the entire universe and still be a black hole. You just keep going. So you could take all of the mass and energy and everything in the entire universe and jam that into a black hole and it still would be fine. It's not going to explode. It's not going to fall apart because it's too much matter. No problem. Didn't don't know. If you intend to do more Q&A videos, you should consider reading the questions asked so people listening to the video as a podcast don't get confused. Once again, Read now the questions. Hopefully you heard me read out the question before I'm giving this answer and uh, we learned our terrible, terrible lesson. Shashank Vaija, is our solar system orbiting the black hole? Our solar system is orbiting the center of the Milky Way, right? Like the way the planets orbit the center of the, orbit the sun. And so it takes about 225 million years for the sun to, and the solar system go all the way around the center of the, the Milky Way. And at the very center of the Milky Way is a supermassive black hole. So yes, although I mean, we're really not orbiting. It's not like, like that is the gravitational center that we are orbiting, but it is at the location that we are orbiting. The real thing that we are orbiting around is the center of mass of the entire galaxy and its dark matter halo, which is the vast majority of the mass of the Milky Way. And that whole thing is turning, and a black hole happens to be where the center of that is. Molly, so what happens when the universe runs out of hydrogen? Do we simply all die and that's it, or what? I wonder if we will discover a way to create more hydrogen. Hydrogen is the sort of the first building block. It's like the, the primordial 
element that the rest of the entire universe is built up of, right? Helium is just hydrogen mashed together. Lithium is hydrogen mashed together. Hydrogen is just protons, and everything is protons and neutrons and electrons, but really, you start with those those atoms of hydrogen. So if we use up all the hydrogen, I mean, maybe there'd be some way that we could take quarks and, and stick them together to make hydrogen, but, but Feasibly, yeah, if we use up all the hydrogen to make all make stars and then use that to make heavier elements and we're, we run out of hydrogen, we're out of everything. Horia Ion. So the universe's speed is faster than the speed of light and the black hole sucks the light in. Is it possible that the universe is expanding slower near black holes? So the, the expansion of the universe that's going on is sort of a stretching of space time. And that's completely separate from this sort of the warping of space time that happens from black holes. So a black hole is embedded in the larger space time and the black hole can be expanding away with the galaxy that's around it. It's not going to slow down the expansion of the universe. So it doesn't matter where these black holes are and how big they get and how massive they are. The expansion is still going to happen regardless of, of what they're doing. So the, the sort of the expansion of the universe and the, and the, and the warping of space time by black holes is, is not connected. James Craver, Euler is pronounced Euler, Euler, Euler. Unless I'm being punked, and then, and then it's actually Euler. Anyway, a couple of people winced when I said Euler, but it's actually Euler, so I apologize. John Rose, my father had asked, but maybe it wasn't clear. Could one assume that there are more Lagrange points if you use a three-dimensional model instead of a two-dimensional model? Well, the point of a Lagrange point is that it is the stable places around a two-body system, right? So if you've got the Earth and the Moon, then if you line them up, there is going to be a third point that is in a direct line. So even if, so if you put another, you know, if you put two objects in a line in one way, and then you put another ob two objects in a line in a different way, then you'll get a different set of Lagrange points, although I'm not sure that that system is going to be stable. But the point is, is that, that the Lagrange point matches the, the, all three bodies in a line. And so, you know, you can do a line one way, you can do a line another way. That's where you have to measure your Lagrange points. Rugged Allen, I've read something about a month ago that a bunch of astronomers from around the world were starting a project that would take the first picture of a black hole that's at the center of our galaxy. Yeah, so you're talking about the Event Horizon Telescope, and this is actually going to be a worldwide collection of radio telescopes that are going to be directed at the supermassive black holes, Event Horizon, and maybe some other close galaxy uh, supermassive black holes, and if everything goes well, they will be able to resolve right to the edge of the event horizon, and we will get uh, some new information about what happens right at the event horizon of a black hole. It's actually still a mystery what goes on in that edge right next to the black hole. Now, it's not going to be like we're going to see this cool picture like out of Interstellar, but we are going to get scientific data about what's going on in that nearby environment. It's really exciting, and as soon as this whole worldwide telescope comes online, I'll totally talk about it. Fish sticks. Is it possible that all the antimatter just fell into black holes? Maybe. Um, you know, like antimatter can absolutely go into black holes, and that just makes the black hole more massive. But the the problem is, is that sort of the way it appears right now is that the 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 black holes, especially the supermassive black holes, formed in relation to the mass of the galaxy as the galaxy was was growing as the stars were forming and so on and so it would be weird that all of that would be antimatter would be would be disappearing just into black holes like that's not something that, that astronomers would expect so so i'm not an astronomer but from what i understand uh no the uh you know we would see the interactions of all that antimatter early on we would see it exploding probably didn't go into black holes so, uh, there you go, wraps up another question show. Thanks a lot for everyone sending in their questions. As always, just type a question in to the YouTube comments. I will find them, see them, I may answer them just in, in YouTube itself, or I will pluck them out and put them into a question show like this. All right, see you next time.